With the recent debacle over corset health and safety concerns, I thought it would be time to dis explore a little bit the history behind corsets and the reasons why women continued to wear these for hundreds of years. And no, the reason is not oppression. Hello and welcome, I'm Maria from Sew Through Time, and this time we're discussing the history behind wearing corsets and why they got such a bad rap in popular culture. Throughout history, women have always wanted bus support. And to solve this, in the Middle Ages, there was layers of, of clothing that had a tight layer or on the bust area. And by the 14th, 15th century, this had evolved into the kirtle, which had a separate bodice that was tightly fitted and it had layers of fabric and stitching to create that smooth supported outer layer and attach skirts to it. The stiffening layers of fabric could include layers of buckram, which was a glue-based stiffened fabric, and then the stitching that would shape the fabric so that it creates a very hard surface, very smooth surface, that will hold you up to the shape that they wanted. But with attached skirts, as in dresses, you didn't really need anything else. But as fashions change, skirts began to gain more volume, so you needed more and more layers of skirts, so they couldn't be any more attached to that same bodice. And hoops became necessary to carry the weight of the skirt to maintain that proper wide silhouette. So as these layers evolve, that stiffened underlayer skirt your dress garment isn't enough anymore to provide waist support because all of these skirts get heavy. So instead of just needing bust support, women start finding themselves needing also waist support to carry those heavy skirts. And thus, sometime in the 16th century, the corset is born. Our bodies are naturally designed to be very well protected. All our major organs are underneath bones to keep them safe. But we do have that squishy midsection, and that's also where naturally, if you don't have a dress garment, if you have a lower body garment that's separate, as in a skirt or hoops, it naturally stays put at your waist, the most squishiest part of your body. And though this part of your body is protected by layers of tough, hard muscles, it is, it is also the one point where we can easily get pressure pain. If you've ever put on jeans to discover only that the waistband is a little too tight and it causes you pain, or worn a skirt with a tight non-woven waistband that causes pain, or even pantyhose, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if these garments can be painful and they weigh from a couple of ounces to a pound at max. Imagine how heavy and how painful it can be when you're wearing a hoop skirt that is stiffened by rows of reeds that are bunched together to form bent ropes. So clearly something was needed to carry the weight of all of these garments. So instead of adding a bodice with straps to each of the garments, a separate garment was developed that was not only stiffened by layers of fabric and stitching, but also boning. This garment is called bodies because like the name implies, it's like an, a separate outer body that carries the weight of your garment instead of your body. And then it also provides the same bust support as would a bodice skirt or kirtle. These bodies have a fairly conical shape to them, and throughout the 17th century, they are worn both as an undergarment and a visible outer garment that is a part of your dress alongside the kirtle. But as the century progresses, the kirtle becomes a more casual at home wear kind of thing or for those who are less well to do. These bodies are stiffened with strips of whalebone called stays. Though they're called whalebone often, it isn't actually whalebone, but rather baleen. Baleen is the feeding filtration system inside the mouth of a baleen whale. These are strong yet flexible bones that can be easily filed into thin strips that can be inserted into the fabric so that it will carry the weight of the garments, but won't break under the flex and turn of the body. In the 18th century, the name evolves again into stays, referring to a garment stiffened with stays. 
and the kirtle evolves into the, a separate garment that doesn't anymore have skirts to it that is then called a corset. Though the shape does evolve with time, the general outline stays conical throughout the 17th and 18th century, all the way up until 1770s or 1780s, when slowly the bust starts to be thrust forward. At this time also, the amount of boning becomes less and less until we get to the 1790s when these garments have so few boning that there is no real difference between the boned stays and the previous less ca more casual, not so boned corsets. Throughout the Regency era when the waistlines are high, the skirt support aspect of the corset becomes obsolete. So instead it evolves into a garment that creates a separate high bust line and a smooth silhouette below that. Then as the waistlines lower again and skirts become more voluminous again, in the 1820s and 30s, that skirt support aspect of the corset becomes important again. But this time, that rounded, separated bust remains, creating a gentle hourglass silhouette. And these garments remain less boned than the previous days, and the name corset stays. Then as we get into the Victorian era, the corset stays largely the same, creating an outer hourglass silhouette that changes a little bit with bust height and the angle of the hip spring, creating a more or less dramatic shape depending on the angle. Now the way a corset works is that it's a close-fitted garment that is patterned to a 3D shape, giving your body the appearance of that shape. But it doesn't actually reduce anything, it, but it can be used to move that soft tissue on top of your body from one place to another, creating the appearance of a different body shape. Now this is also the bit where problems can occur because soft tissue can be moved around, but bones can't. So if the corset isn't patterned or fitted correctly to your body, it can press on bones or nerve endings and that can be uncomfortable or downright painful just the same way as carrying the pressure of all those skirts around on a very small bit of your waist can be. Well, if corsets were mainly used for skirt and bust support and to create the fashionable silhouette, how did they get such a bad rap? Well, for that we have mostly to thank Victorian men. Though nowadays looking at the curvy Victorian silhouette, we might assume that it is meant for the male gaze. Men actually fought really hard in the Victorian era to try to get women to stop wearing corsets. They came up with even all sorts of bogus medical claims to try to stop women from wearing them. Like for instance, they would take malformed skeletons and claim that those were caused by corsetry when in fact they were caused by disease. This was a part of a much larger battle to try to keep women in their place by ridiculing their fashions because women had been using fashions for hundreds of years as a way of expressing themselves and their opinions when their opinions were largely ignored. By physically taking up space and room and demanding attention. So as the women's rights movement gained momentum and women started gaining rights and freedoms, there was a huge pushback that was often aimed at women's physical appearance and their fashions. Then even as the dress reform and aesthetic movements pushed towards a more relaxed, less built silhouette, and then fashions changed slowly to less heavy layers, women still continue to wear a corset for that back and bust support that it provides. Even an underbust corset with a brassiere provides better bust support than even the toughest bra on its own ever can because it stabilizes the flesh underneath, keeping your breast tissue more stable. But even more than that, a corset allows you to create a silhouette that has nothing to do with your actual body size or shape. It allows you to become the fashionable shape within seconds without placing any sort of judgment on your own actual body size or shape. Women's appearance ha has always been a topic of judgment and even ridicule. So why would women want to put their own actual natural body up for judgment when it could be hidden 
within layers of corsetry and padding to create the fashionable silhouette of the day. So in my opinion, it is the biggest lie that we have been fed to see the corset as the enemy. Instead of fashionable silhouettes, we have fashionable body parts. Instead of padding, we have diet culture. The same judgment and shame has followed us from our outer garments to our actual bodies, and we don't even get the back support. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that like button because it really does help out in this world. And subscribe if you feel like it and you haven't done that already so that you can see me again next time. Bye!